Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different here on the channel. It's my first POV video. So I'm gonna take you for a drive on this Sunday morning and talk a little bit about the Ram Rebel. This is my 2020 Ram Rebel. I'm as if you're following the channel, I'm sure you know that already. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about the driving experience and the design of this truck and also answer a couple of more questions I've gotten since the last video I posted about answering questions. So first of all, quick walk around here and then we're gonna have a look at the interior. One of the big reasons why I decided to go with a Ram Rebel is of course the interior uh, quality. This, as I'm sure you know, was uh, a bit higher in level when it comes to quality than the Ford and the Chevy that was sold at the time. But since then, uh, Chevy and Ford have both stepped up their game when it comes to interior. So they're pretty much on the same level right now. But when I bought it, it definitely was not. So inside we have a lot of storage. This uh, split opening right here where you can have some shallow stuff on the top I have my headphones here for example and then down here you have the more the larger bin down there which I store my uh, GoPro accessories and camera accessories and stuff like that and then you have this little slot right here and I love that they still have the, <laughs> the coin slots right here it's kind of an old-school thing that I haven't seen in a while we have a total of eight cup holders in the front so we have these two these two in the back and then two in each door right here my truck is uh, equipped with the uh, optional 12 inch screen it's in a vertical position as you can see right here very user friendly i really like the way this uh, works the touch screen it's not the you know super responsive it takes a little bit before it to uh, kind of uh, follow your fingers as you can see if i hit light it took maybe half a second to get to that uh, to that page inside the software but other than that is a great uh, addition to the interior of the RAM it just makes it look nice as well and you you can connect it to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto the gauge cluster as well very clean of the details of everything and also that we have these four customizable displays in each corner so if you go into for example let's see screen setup right here then you can customize what you want the upper right or the upper left upper right lower left and lower right to actually display so you can for example now we're on the lower right right there we can have oil pressure oil temp or battery voltage or whatever you want want down here and i just think it's a neat setting to have it just makes it look a lot uh, cooler in my opinion it also gives you a lot more information about what's going on with the truck so let's move on to the back seat before we talk a little bit more about the exterior design back here we have a regular pretty normal setup we have a 40 60 split both of these fold up like this so you have a huge amount of space back there for whatever you need to just put in the back seat pretty convenient and you have a couple of vents down here no displays or air condition uh, setups back here looking at the bed this is the five foot seven bed with the full cab i don't even think they sell the quad cab anymore after 2022 or something like that pretty normal i came came with this liner from the uh, dealer when i bought it so it's pretty nice on top i have the rca bed rack as you know already with the traction boards which i almost had to use the other day when we were out mudding but uh, my friend had some traction boards as well so he used his but that will come in handy when we go out mudding or or doing some off-road stuff so it's good to have those and i can't remember what these were called exactly but these are some rubber tie downs or hooks that you can put whatever you want on pretty convenient as well as you can see on the other side i have a, a little a small little shovel and an axe right here they're just held down with these rubber uh, straps right here they sit pretty tightly they're not gonna go anywhere now talking about the exterior design that's another reason why i wanted to get the ram rebel it's just because i love the way this thing looks specifically the proportions of this thing so if you look at it from a side view you can see that it's a clear three box setup so we have the box number one if you sketch this out you have a box where the hood is then you have a box where the greenhouse is and then the final box would be the the bed so 
it's a very clear truck proportions so there's not much over styling going on specifically not in the side we have a sharp key line for the shoulder line going all the way from the front end right here and stretching all the way back to the rear end i don't know if you can see it in black but we have this curvature that used to be straight on the previous generation ram uh, ram 1500s but now we have a little bit of some styling going on in there and of course looking at the rear view we have the dual symmetrical exhaust and that's one thing i love about the 1500s i don't like the f-150 style when it sticks out on the side like that i want to have symmetrical bazooka tailpipes like we have right here moving on to the front end i think ram has really nailed their identity when it comes to their design it's very easy to see immediately that this is a ram and nothing else and specifically now when you have the headlights on turn off the daytime running lights so i only have the two led bars being lit up right now and i think that gives it even more of an identity or dna when it comes to the graphic design you can see i have a light bar installed that's a 20 inch aux beam and i also have the two pod lights up there in each a pillar also aux beam design and then we have the typical rebel mustache going right here some people don't like it but i really think this looks really good this is the night edition as well so you see this little plate down here this is usually silver on uh, normal rebels when you don't have the night edition i think it looks good with black and i decided to go with some bronze wheels to just have a splash of color onto the truck which i think just sets it off nicely as well quickly let's have a look under the hood at the 5.7 liter v8 that we have under here 395 horsepower and 410 pound feet of torque i don't have the e-torque which gives you a little bit more boost but other than that it doesn't really make a lot of differences i think you get a little better mileage if you have the e-torque but other than that it's pretty much the same as this one the only mod i've done under here is the knn air filter right here i think it looks a lot better as you can see i need to clean it since we went mudding it's still a little dirty but it's, it looks a lot better than having the plastic cover that you have with the original air filter. Let's start with the ride quality. If you're going to update or upgrade to 35 inch tires, how will that affect the ride quality of your truck? Well, I think it has a lot to do with whether you decide to level the truck or if you decide to lift it by three or maybe even six inches that's obviously going to uh, have a big impact on how you uh, perceive the ride quality to be different from stock so i just went with a simple ready lift two inch front leveling kit to just be able to fit the 35 inch tires because as you know the rebel is already lifted i think one inch from factory so all i needed was just to lift the front end and be have it be leveled with the with the rear in order to fit the 35 inch tires and honestly i can't feel any difference in handling or ride quality it feels like stock still but i do think that has to do with with the, the, my decision to not go with a uh, lift kit and instead do the leveling kit now we're coming down on the main street here in del rey beach and it is sunday uh, and it looks pretty busy not as busy as on the weekends obviously but hopefully we'll be able to see some exotics or some really cool cars here on uh, on this main strip called atlantic avenue i like this place better than i liked the i used to live in deerfield beach was kind of the neighboring town to this but this feels more pedestrian friendly there's a lot more um, walkability the sidewalks are wider and it feels like pedestrians have priority over uh, over cars here there is a beautiful rs6 i believe i can't see the rear it might be an rs7 but it's like matt red let's see if we can get a good shot of it up here Yes, look at that. What a beauty. Look at the wheels too. Absolutely love it. I love the matte red. You don't usually see matte red cars, but that was pretty cool. So the ride quality, as I said, not changed for me. I also think that it has to do a lot with tires. So the thing, I, I went with a pretty in between, not the, not the most expensive tire, but also not the cheapest one. So it's kind of it sits kind of in between and it's called the 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 fury country hunter tires 
I've had them on mud, I've had them in the snow, in the rain, and they've always performed really, really well. And I'm super happy with the performance, especially for the price. It's kind of right in the middle in the range of tires and uh, the, the cost of tires. So if you're looking to get new off-road tires, I would definitely look into uh, the, the uh, Fury Country Hunter tires. I like the design of the tires. They look aggressive, but not too aggressive. And at the same time, they keep the same uh, comfort that I'm used to with, with the stock tire. So really good choice there. And in addition to the uh, fuel Rebel wheels that I have on here, the 20 by uh, 12 and a half, I think they just set everything off specifically when you have this all black uh, truck. I wanted to have a splash of color on to the, the, the truck and that would be the bronze wheels which I think sets everything off really nicely and right there we have a blue demon I don't know if you can see it right there you can definitely tell that's a demon based on the wheels themselves and I love the wide body kit that the demons have stock on their cars Challenger is just the last remaining muscle car it doesn't really care about cornering that much but it still looks like a, a perfect modernization of a 70s muscle car, in my opinion. While we're waiting here on the train, let's have a listen to the audio system. I think I have, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is a, a, an option, this Alpine sound system that I have. I'm not sure about the specific uh, specifics, how many speakers and subs and, and stuff like that, but uh, I just want to play this song so you can maybe get an understanding of what it sounds like, even though I'm just recording it on this GoPro. This audio system is more than enough, more than what I need. I usually, mostly actually listen to podcasts in the car, but it has a really nice deep bass to it. And you can of course do all the uh, equalizer settings in the software right here. If you want to change something up and down the balance of the uh, speakers and so on. Now we're coming up close to the beach here. We're going to just cross the intercoastal, which is this bridge up here. And then we're kind of on an island. So I can show you that here on the map if we can get my position right there. So here we're going over the intercoastal, a lot of boats out on this Sunday, as you can see, both ways. And up there uh, where the road ends, that's actually the beach. So that's as far as you can go in Florida until you hit the Atlantic Ocean. So we're gonna head out there and then we're gonna take a turn around onto I-95 and go on the highway because I wanna uh, show you or, or maybe I can capture the noise that the truck makes now with these new tires so you can compare it to the stock ones if it's even possible to compare because they're so quiet in my opinion so we're gonna do that in just a second we have a white f430 up here spider not my favorite Ferrari but it's still really cool to see it in white specifically out in the uh, in the sunshine like this or there is the beach I don't know if you can see it really because it's covered by these bushes but it is right there and this is where I usually come and just run I like to run along this uh, the, the sidewalk right next to the beach super nice not as windy as it has been it's been crazy windy these last couple of days waves look a little calmer today than what they've been this past week here. 
I want to talk about rubbing as well. Uh, question I get about rubbing, I don't have any rubbing with the leveling kit. Fortunately, when I'm alone, if I have the car packed to the max with five people, the 10 ton, I might have a slight rubbing when I make a sharp full right turn and go over a bump, for example, enter a gas station and go up that incline, like usually what you have an incline in the beginning of the gas station, then it might be half a second of rubbing, but that's about it that I get. So nothing to worry about there <laughs> either if you're thinking about getting 35s on your truck. Uh, leveling kit uh, and 35s is the way to go in my opinion, and it doesn't give you any rubbing. You do have to do some cutting, but that's all only in the plastic parts. So you take away the plastic flap that sits right behind the front wheels, you take that off, it just uh, it snaps off, and then you might have to do some cutting in some more plastic, but that's about it. Let's talk a little bit about fuel consumption as well. Another question I get on pretty much every single video, how does the mods affect the fuel economy of the truck? And honestly, I, when I got the truck, I was about 13 and a half, maybe if I was driving like a grandma, I would get 14. And right now, if we go down and look here in the, in the screen, my fuel economy is sitting at 12.3. So I'm from 12.3 to 12.7 or something like that. I'm ranging in that, uh, in that range. And to me, I think that's a really good deal for what you get when you're uh, doing all these modifications. I mean, the wheels obviously is gonna add a lot more mass, maybe not a lot, but more mass than the stock 33s. So just dropping it by one MPG and in addition with the 10 ton as well, I think that's a pretty decent deal in my opinion. And I'm not complaining about the fuel consumption at all, because after all, you do have a 5.7 liter, 400 horsepower, V8 up front, so you can't, um, uh, you know, you can't really expect fuel economy to be uh, one of the one of the uh, positives about a truck like this. What we're gonna do now? We're gonna go down and enter the highway and get up to speed so you can hear the noise level inside with the 35 inch tires. One thing I really like about this setup right here is that I have physical buttons for the two settings that normal people use the most, I would say, and that is the temp right here, I have a physical button for this, and the fan speed also up and down, of course, uh, with, with buttons. It's a really good idea to keep those as uh, tactile buttons and not only have them as touch. So we're entering I-95 now, and hopefully I'll be able to get a... Uh, hard pull here so you can maybe hear the uh, the open air air filter because you can hear it in higher rpms that it's sucking in more more air and i think it sounds pretty cool i probably get a couple of horsepower in addition from that so let's see i'm gonna be quiet now so you can hear the droning noise and the acceleration So now we're cruising in highway speeds, and as you can tell, it's not really a lot of road noise in here. It's pretty much the same as stock. The only noise I can hear is some wind noise, but that's to, to be expected with a big truck like this, and I think it's coming from the side mirrors. It's not coming from the rear end either, so uh, it's it, the, the, the rack and the tent are not affecting the, the wind noise at all. And I think that's really good because I decided to go with the um, the slim rack just because of that reason. I didn't want the tent 
to create a lot of drag sticking up too far and what it does now it's it sits a couple of inches sticks up a little bit but not enough to create uh, additional wind noise so that's about it for this video guys I just wanted to make a POV driving video because I enjoy watching these videos myself on YouTube so if you enjoy these kind of videos let me know in the comments below and as always if you have any questions about uh, the truck or YouTube or anything like that just let me know as well and I'll make a video on it any uh, products that I'm talking about here all the mods that I'm doing that I've done to the truck are linked down below in the description where you can go and read more about them check out the reviews and order for yourself if you want to for your own truck thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video Thank <laughs> you.